Good evening everyone. Um, great to be back. I've been missing for a couple of weeks, just too busy, recovering from a holiday, full on at work, trying to get recipes right, um, trying to look at the many options I've been asked to look at. Tonight, now this is totally experimental, I'm actually cooking uh, Mediterranean uh, sea bass fillets. I always normally just put these fillets in a frying pan, skin side down, fry for five minutes. Tonight I thought I will try using the air fryer and I'm going to try something different and bring a little bit of the like Greek Mediterranean flavours in with the fish. Very delicate fish so we mustn't overkill it. This might be an absolute disaster. So I hope you get to see it and I hope it's successful. First of all I just want to say uh, thanks and hello to all the new subscribers. In fact, hello to all my subscribers. Uh, John Bennett, Dale, um, I think there was another John. I kept two, I've had quite a few, in fact, to be uh, honest tonight. Um, I'm very chuffed. I've just uh, gone over um, 1K subscribers. Woohoo! Um, a lot of the people that I subscribe to have something like 500K subscribers, but for me, it's a big deal. Very ordinary person, not a professional cook, work full time. Um, so you just, I'm just sharing a bit of my life and what I cook for those who want to. So let's get back to the uh, sea bass. Okay, so I'm going to run through quickly through the ingredients with you. And there will be a list of ingredients at the end of the video. First and foremost, the star of the show has got to be the sea bream fillets. And I've just discovered there's a couple of little bones in these. These are um, actually farmed, sustainable uh, sea bass. So because they're farmed, it's it's not perfect because, yeah, it probably does lack something in the flavour. But let's face it, we're not depleting the stocks in the sea this way. Um, okay, so my idea is we've got some cherry tomatoes just here. Butter. Love, well, I absolutely love butter. Um... I'll talk to you an issue about fat shortly. Um, in this one, I've got my fresh herbs, um, dill and curly parsley, a mixture of both. Don't know if it'll work. The two herbs that I like with fish, so I thought, let's put them together. Let's really be experimental. Um, lemon for zesting and juice. Also lemon for slicing, because I need some sliced lemon to go with this. I'm bringing in some salt, thinking of the ocean, in the form of capers. Just a couple, as you'll see as I go through. And just a tiny sprinkle. I thought, what herb can I add, which I feel will blend with these. So I'm going with wild thyme. Again, I really don't know if it works, but I will be honest with you. And if I think it's disgusting, I will tell you. <laughs> okay, going back to fat. I had... Um, a guy on about the sausages I used the other day, which I responded to. I love your comments. And it's good when people question things. Um, he said the, um, that sausages um, were 40 set, uh, 46% fat, and I had quoted them as being a 97% meat, which I possibly did. Hands up, I should have said 97% pork. Uh, yes, they will have a high percentage. Sausages do need fat in them. Uh, most meats that are really flavoursome and a lower muscle meat, a tough muscle meat, need fat, need to break down. And as you cook, especially in the ninjas, as you cook your sausages, you'll see all the fat just about comes out of them. I cut into my sausages. They're never greasy. Um, I have to watch. I don't overcook them or they go dry. It's not an issue for me that we don't eat sausages every day of the week. I believe food should be about balance. Um, I don't believe anyone should judge anyone for what we eat. But I do believe you have to be sensible. And I would like to say that the sausages I actually use are 30% fat. Because I actually looked into it to make sure that mine weren't 46% fat. Um, but there are some out there that are virtually all fat. Um, but I'm quite pleased with mine. Another lady asked me if I supported, why didn't I support local farmers and go to a butcher? John and I lived on the farm for 23 years before we moved into this house. We lived outside the little village. A regular part of my weekly shop was the trip into the village to the family butchers. Best sausages I've ever had. Um, he didn't actually make them on his premises, but his father in the other butcher's shop did, and they were superb. All my meat came from there. But since moving into Salisbury, I have to be honest, I know there is one butcher in Salisbury I know of, 
um, he doesn't make his own sausages. He buys them in and he's quite open and honest about them. They are quite nice, but they haven't beat what I've bought from Waitrose. Also, what I quite like about Waitrose is Leckford Farm is their farm. You can even go and visit it. Um, you have to book in and visit the uh, arrange your visits. Um, but I feel kind of in a way I'm supporting what they're doing because they do look after people. Um, they do look after their farmers. I do know people who actually sell to Waitrose, chuffed to bits to sell to Waitrose. Um, so you've got to pick and choose. But at the end of the day, you know what? I've been to Little as well. Um, I've been to Aldi and I've got good stuff. So it's about just getting what you're happy with. But anyway, keep those comments rolling in. I love it. Let's get cooking, shall we? Okay, this, these fillets, can you see this? Yeah, right, okay. Just down here, always feel, these are, are boneless fillets, but always feel around and sure enough, there's a little bone. They do the best they can when they fillet these fish, but be careful, folks. And this is another bone. So go over your fish, get rid of these bits. I hate bones in fish, it's one of my biggest hits. So get your fingers in there, feel around. Also, it can be dangerous if you choke on a fish bone, there's no fun at all, you could end up in hospital. Okay, so as I say, be very careful, feel around. Fingertips are brilliant for this. It's the only way really you can get into those the fleshy fish and feel. Okay, that's about it. I will be honest, lots of people eat two of these because they're not, as you can see, they're not a great big fish, but tonight I've just come in and decided I would do this. So, and I only have one pack out. And these were bought from Waitrose, they were bought from the fresh fish um, counter. And again, they're very honestly, told me that they are farmed, they didn't pretend that they are wild, sea caught, um, they are farmed. Okay, that's it. Just gonna wash my hands one second, excuse me. Right, okay, I'm just gonna season. So I'm using rock salt, Okay, let's do this. I haven't put any oil in here, but actually now I'm thinking about it because they're going to sit on that. I do want this skin to crisp up. I don't think that's going to happen because in a pan, it, the heat comes from underneath. So let's put a little bit on. Oh, no, I'm not going to put oil in. I'm going to put some good old butter in because the skin does have oil in anyway. So let's sit it. Let's take this out so you can see exactly what I'm doing. I'm just going to put a couple of knobs of butter like that in, squash it down. Yes, folks, I didn't show you my homemade. I am the worst at this type of thing. And I suddenly realised if I tried cooking this on the rack, everything's just going to run through. And I also realised that even on the base, my fish might burn on. That's not what I want to achieve. So I suddenly thought, I must make something. Let's do a kind of Jamie Oliver packet. Jamie Oliver would be ashamed of it, but there you go. Okay, it's the best I can do. It's just foil. Fish is laid in. Okay, I think my next job is I'm going to get some lemon slices. Just cut some lemon slices up here. Like this. Oh, God, I love, absolutely love lemon. I'm going to put lemon zest on as well. Again, I've got to be careful, you can't be doing overkill on this. Right, the other two slices are going to be for this one. So I'll take this, I'll put that one back for a minute. I'm winging this, guys, because I haven't a flipping clue what I'm doing, really, because I've never done it. So, um, right, okay. Again, that one's gone in nicely. Back, and the lemon's going on top of there. Did I season that one? Let me check, is it? Okay, so that's that. Now, I think I'm going to put my herbs kind of on the top and floating around because um, 
I'm going to top all this with butter and hope that it makes this amazing kind of like buttery sea flavoured fish sauce. And I just hope it just doesn't all bubble out and disappear, which it may well do. Right, okay. Oh, smell. I love fresh herbs, especially dill. Right, okay. I use quite a lot of dill when, <clears throat> when I am doing the salmon. Okay. Capers. Right, okay. Just a couple of teaspoonfuls. Now drain off the salt water, you don't want to be putting that over your fish. And just sprinkle them, I'll show you this in a minute, because they're going to bring that element of the sea, I hope, into this. So I'll get them off the lemons, they actually go in there. About two, well, it, it's personal choice. If you hate capers, you don't have to add them, it's that simple. About right. And now a little sprinkle. Oh. And this is just a pinch. You don't want to see that. Just a pinch. And the same on the other side. People are going to say, what on earth is she putting? Mm, wild timing. What The way my thinking is, tomatoes and thyme go together very well. So I'm putting cherry tomatoes. I'm going to dot them round. They're going to bake down again round the fish, and the butter and these juices are going to go into the into the sauce, which I then hopefully, provided I don't drop all the sauces I'm getting these packets out, I'm going to actually put over the fish when it's finished. So I'm using um, three tiny cherries on each fish. Now, when I do this particular fish in the frying pan, it's skin down, medium to hot pan, and it's literally five minutes. You don't even turn the fish over. It is that simple. Um, and then I coat it. I actually melt a spoonful of butter in the pan just before it's finished, and I coat the fish with um, salted butter over the top. And it's so lovely, and it's so delicate. I found, kind of thought it, it will be nice to do something a little different. This is where the lemon zest comes in, guys. Just to add more lemony oils in there. I keep saying all the time I'm going to get myself a really good lemon zester. I'll get round to it one of these days. Oh, can I talk to you about farm... Um, farmers markets I do go to farmers markets absolutely love them I can't always get there because of work when I do that's when I do support local farmers because I absolutely love their homemade bread cakes to die for cheeses vegetables um, olives that come over with some of the French farmers that come then I absolutely believe I, st I do believe we should support local this is knobs of butter. Now, have a look at this. Knobs of butter are going to sit on the top. Ooh. I sincerely hope this lot stays in here. I'm just going to adjust that up a bit higher. hands and just see if I've forgotten anything um right okay so I've got butter I might just do a tiny sprinkle of olive oil over the top so that mends melds with my butter and the things uh the tomatoes and capers I was going to use lemon juice but that may be too acidic I don't want to kill this so let's wash my hands Get my olive oil out. And 
this again is just going to be, it's just extra virgin olive oil. Just a drizzle. And if you're anything like me, that's terrible because I'm hopeless at this. Right, okay. <laughs> Let's try a clean teaspoon. Because I really don't want to drown this in oil. Right, so I would say the one teaspoonful has done exactly what I want it to do between the two. Right, here goes. Keep your fingers crossed. It looks lovely. It smells amazing. Now what on earth am I going to cook it on? I'm going to actually go... I was going to do air fry, which is 200, which I think might be a little bit aggressive for this fish. So I'm actually going to try the roast. It could go horribly wrong, but I'm going to try the roast and let's see where we go with it. So one and two, one, that's two. Um, roast, 190. Do I take it down one? No, let's leave it at 190. Time, it's not going to take long. So let's go 12 minutes and I can check it and I can always alter that match and let's go let's cook time for a glass of wine see you in a minute guys well we're back um it's been quite strange for me not shaking the baskets <laughs> you get so used to going to your ninja and shaking it that i had to stop and think for god's sake don't shake it anyway let's see how we've done um let's oh yeah that looks pretty what do you think looks good you can see it's nicely cooked off. The lemon has took on what I always call like singes because that extracts the oils from the lemon. Oh, now I've got to work out how I get this out. This could be where I get burnt and I might scream slightly. Let's check basket number two. Yeah, that looks pretty even, pretty much the same. And that looks pretty quite good, I think. It smells good. So right, first of all, I need to work out fearful tongs. I might be able to, oh, that's quite cool, folks. That tin foil is actually not too hot. So let's put that one back. Yeah, yeah, I know I've got to get them off here. I'm with you there. I'm, I'm thinking, I am thinking, right. I don't know how I'm going to get it off, but there you go. Right, okay. That's that bit done. And let's, let's get... A good old palette knife and a good old fish slice tools. And let's see what we go from here. Let's try this one. I kind of feel inclined to say, well, serve it in the packet, but you can't really do that, can you? Or can you? I don't know. That's not bad. I've left a bit of tear up there. Okay, and what I want to do is I want this, see that, oh that goodness, that sauce. It's not really sauce, is it? Oh, do I need that? Do you know what? That's, that's got some nice fish on there. Get in there. Right, okay. That's that one. This one looks as though it may have stuck on a bit more. Oh, and it may have even gotten knotted in there. No, no, it's coming. Right, okay. Interesting enough, this one does seem to be more stuck. I have no idea. Ooh, watch the wine. Right, okay. Right, let's try and get it under there. This might have been better with the... I feel... I feel I'm lifting this totally off the skin. Kind of have. I haven't destroyed it. Well, not quite. Put that there. I do not want the skin on there. So let's get the little tongs. And with this one, I don't know. The, the sauce has disappeared somewhere. I don't know where. So that's that's not a, a, such a good one. This one looks perfect. So I don't know if there's a better way. I'm experimenting at the moment, guys, with little glass um, dishes that fit inside there. 
that might be the better answer. I will have to attempt this again and let you know. But regards taste, I think it's going to taste fabulous. So let's see, we're just having, it's a miserable night, so we're having a creamy mash. If you've got a big appetite, you definitely need two fillets. We, on the other hand, have got a cherry pie for pudding. <laughs> so, you know, so don't, don't worry about us. We're not going to starve. Right, okay. I've got a pan full of broccoli here. And my husband's going, oh my God, no. But do you know what? You can put cold broccoli in your fridge and throw it into all sorts of risottos and curries. And you can even throw it on a pizza if you're so inclined. So, and that's what will be happening. Well, not necessarily under pizza. It will very possibly go into a risotto, a vegetable risotto at some point tomorrow, which I haven't tried in the Ninja, but I will let you into a secret. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do the recipe and show you guys. I made um, dolphin raw potatoes in there on Sunday. We had a piece of beef and... Uh, I got one of these little glass dishes I'm talking about and I followed my own recipe exactly, just like I have tonight. And um, just winged it. Oh my God, they were beautiful. And it means it comes in a portion, because this is the smaller, this is the 300 model. Um, and it is smaller. And I now, if I'd known more, I probably would have gone for the 400. But really it does us. And this portion size did John and I perfectly. So I'm going to do like two portions next time, a freezer portion in the glass dish and then just reheat it. I thought, yeah, and I'm going to try moussaka because I do um, I do do a very nice authentic moussaka and I'm going to share that one with you guys. But anyway, we just I'll turn this off because I'm burning electric. Just a dash of black pepper. I'll put lemon on the plate. I've already got my wine. So, um... I think that looks quite interesting for a fish dish. Okay, guys, um, I will let you know after we've ate it. I'll leave you a comment, okay? Thank you for watching. Keep watching. Be patient with me. Um, I don't get a lot of time to get these done, and my husband gets even less to edit them. But thanks for subscribing, and thanks for commenting. See you later.